Hi guys, it is another, imagine that, here in the Sunshine State, another gloomy gray day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the mosquito-plagued Ocala National Forest on this gloomy Monday morning, February 4th, 2019, and I want to thank Alert viewer brother Jeremy for sending us this story and I'm sending this out to not so alert <laughs> listener book hermit book hermit this one is for you and now my twin on that other channel has talked about this story a couple of times but I don't think I've mentioned it over here and I want to thank I can't, I'm not real sure if this is the San Jose Mercury News or the San Jose Mercury News covering a verbatim story from the Washington Post but this is the best story yet I have seen on the subject of this uh, sea star formerly called starfish collapse the just pretty much the total collapse of an entire species and the catastrophic knock-on effects it's having uh, all up and down the west coast otherwise known as the latest horror story unfolding in the Pacific Ocean so take it away either Mercury News or Washington Post <clears throat> California has a weird new desert. It's in the Pacific Ocean. A colorful sea star has vanished from the Pacific Ocean off California and Oregon, and its nemesis, a voracious kelp-eating urchin, has run amok. And the consequences for the area's marine ecology and California's fishery has been catastrophic. There you go. This is uh, for these for you guys who don't know what this pretty much now extinct thing looks like. Here is a picture of uh, what they're talking about. Uh, the former sea star. Okay, take it away. <clears throat> oh yeah, this is the Washington by Daryl Fears from the Washington Post. Take it away, Daryl. Six years after it was stricken by a wasting disease off the northern California coast, the sunflower sea star, one of the most colorful starfish in the ocean, has all but vanished, and the domino effects threatens to unravel an entire marine ecosystem. The cause of the sea star's demise is a mystery, but it coincided. It coincided with a warming event in the Pacific Ocean, if you remember the Great Blob. I think they just called it the Great Blob. Poss possibly tied to the climate, and, of course, other people would say it's possibly tied to Fukushima, although I personally go with the climate, folks. That lasted for two years, ending in 2015. It heated vast stretches of water in patches and likely exacerbated the disease, according to a new study released last Wednesday. This is Drew Harville the lead author of the study from the journal Science Advances that documented the Sunflower Sea Stars retreat into possible extinction off California <coughs> and Oregon. <clears throat> Take it away, Drew. Quote, I have never seen a decline of this magnitude of a species so important. It's big news and calls for major management action. We felt there was not enough attention. Yes. 
If the study had a purpose, she said, it was to call attention to the Sea Star's demise so that federal officials would take action to list it as endangered and work to save it, possibly with a breeding program using sunflower stars that are still surviving in parts of Washington, Alaska, and Canada. Harville and her team of researchers traced the sea star's decline using diver, diver surveys of shallow waters between 2006 and 2014. Divers saw anywhere from two to 100 stars during their dives. The study said, after that, you know, a after this wasting disease. Uh, swept through, they saw total devastation in at least 60% of surveys in Washington and Canada. No sunflower <coughs> sea stars were seen. <coughs> and in California and Oregon, 100% of surveys recorded the unthinkable zero sightings of sea stars. The coastal Pacific is the only place sunflower sea stars are known to exist. It's been there years since, it's been three years since divers have spotted one sea star below Washington, and their disappearance could not have come at a worse time. Sunflower sea stars started dying off around the time that the population of their favorite prey, purple sea urchins, exploded. The voracious purple urchins feed on vegetation that is key to the ecosystem in that area of the Pacific, bull kelp forests that support young fish, snails, crabs, birds, and a range of other animals. Over the last few years, California's fifth largest fishery, the red sea urchins, harvested for sushi, has cratered. A once teeming population of decorative snails called abalone, which drew tourists and professional divers, has also crashed. Both the red sea urchins and the abalone rely on kelp to survive, and their combined loss has cost the state tens of millions of dollars, according to economists. Scientists are wondering if the freak warming anomaly, disease, and their adverse effects are signs of things to come. That is exactly what uh, what it is. This is a little, uh, just a little whisper from uh, Mother Nature uh, about things to come here in the collapse of, in this case, the kelp forest. <clears throat> this is Mark Carr, professor of e ecology and evolutionary biology for the University of California at Santa Cruz. Quote, what happens before anything else is you get this coincidence, this coincidence between ocean warming and the outbreak of the disease that took out the sea star. We have been trying to understand why. We have never seen this kind of disease outbreak in sea stars, and we have been trying to understand how the hell it happened. We know we are going to see more warming in the future because of global climate change, so who knows if we will see more of these purple sea urchin outbreaks. You do wonder, you do wonder whether we are transitioning into a new environmental dynamic that we just have not seen in the past. Close quote. Mm -hmm. Wednesday's study focuses on the demise of the sunflower sea star, a top predator in the tidal waters in California and Oregon, 
that was as common as a robin, researcher said, like wolves that control deer populations and bats that control crop-eating moths, <clears throat> the sea stars kept purple urchins under control for 600 miles, you know, up, up and down the uh, Pacific coast in the kelp forest. With the sea stars on the prowl, purple urchins cowered in cracks and crevices of coral and waited for broken kelp leaves to float their way. Said Harville, they, meaning the sea stars, scared the heck out of them. They caused them to stampede trying to get out of their way. But with sea stars virtually annihilated, the purple urchins spread out across the ocean floor by the tens of thousands and gobbled the kelp forest. The affected areas have a grim nickname, urchin barrens. The sunflower sea star is a member of a species once known as starfish. Marine biologists changed the name because, among, among other things, they are not fish. Also, the sunflower isn't star-shaped. It's more like the sun. It's an eye-popping sight, a, technolo a technicolored creature that can grow as big as an SUV hubcap. Individuals often live together on coral in large pastel communities, and they move across the ocean floor using dozens of squiggly <coughs> arms. Uh, I'm going to skip a... <coughs> yeah, they, they talk more <coughs> about the sea star itself. Uh, okay. Okay. <coughs> The way sunflower sea stars wasted from disease is as grisly as they are beautiful. They melted and dissolved as if in a horror film, and they were trapped. In the beginning, when the disease was first detected, it was thought that warmer tidal waters were a killing field. but. The study showed no evidence that deeper and colder depths are a refuge for them. Um, and I, I know I've reported on other studies showing the same thing, that uh, these apocalyptimists acting like these uh, various sea creatures being killed by warmer waters could just move to cooler waters deeper. And sorry, doesn't work that way. Scientists are more concerned about the bleak outlook for bull kelp forest is more worrisome because it holds up an entire ecosystem. When the kelp disappeared, so did other animals and aspects of California's economy. This is Steve Lonhart, a marine ecologist for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Quote, California has very reduced kelp cover. I think, at least when I was out there two years ago, it was over 90% up there, at least north of San Francisco. I guess that's very reduced. California has very reduced kelp cover. Bull kelp is missing from San Francisco Bay to Point Arena, a tremendous stretch of coast. Areas where there was kelp forest is now dominated by urchins. People along this coast are extremely alarmed because the kelp supports the red urchin fishery, close quote. Lonhart said that a kelp forest is habitat, quote, for literally hundreds of thousands of marine organisms. So when you lose the kelp, 
imagine all the bird and imagine all the birds and insects that rely on trees. Kelp is delicious. Everything in the marine eco in the marine system loves to eat kelp. Close quote. To lose the kelp is to lose a diet and nutrients, the cornerstone of the food web. Herons can walk in the middle of the ocean on a thick and healthy kelp forest and hunt for juvenile fish. Sea otters wrap themselves in it to take naps, said Lonhart. Quote, now it is just blue open water, close quote, in the North Pacific and untold numbers of purple urchins at the ocean bottom just waiting to eat it when it tries to recover. There you go, guys. Anyone who does not understand the collapse of one more ecosystem in the Pacific Ocean, anyone uh, on any one of our non-alert leaders, uh, readers claiming that the Pacific Ocean is doing just fine, uh, really needs to find new books to read in their hermitage. Anyway, it looks like the sun, I do not believe it, the sun has burst out in the sunshine state. So I'm going to wrap up this chronicle of the collapse and get out there and enjoy the Ocala National Forest in the sunshine state of Florida while I still can. Bye, guys.